question was posed by Lisa, and the question really revolves around Everest and the, the enormous amount of people that are actually climbing Everest at the moment. It's these long lines of people on Everest, and it's not only really Everest, it's many of the high mountains around. <coughs> so the question, is this really mountaineering? And, and why, is, why the question is because a lot of people are actually saying that the, these ascents of these high mountains are not in the true tradition. They're not in the true tradition because all you have to do nowadays is go out there, go onto the web, pay your bucks, and somebody will, 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 will guide you up these mountains. I believe that you still have to walk up the thing and it's still a bloody big mountain and you still need big legs to do it. But the, the feeling is that it's not in the, in the true tradition of, of, of Hillary and Tensing in the 1953 expedition, where in fact Hillary and Tensing were uh, the, the climbers guided the Sherpas through the Kumba Ice Fall. The climbers guided the Sherpas and porters up to the higher camps. And so the, I, the idea is that the modern game is no longer the same as in the games that climbers used to play before, which is beautifully portrayed by in, in the hundred so articles in uh, Ken Wilson's book, uh, The Games Climbers Play. And I want to run, run you through a few of the games climbers play. And it's a few of the games that I played quite hard and I loved playing, and I believe is the essence of mountaineering. The one game is alpine climbing. And everything is training to go alpine climbing. And this, this photo right here is Andrew de Klerk right on the summit of Kenya in his running shoes. The, the other game that climbers play is, is big wall climbing. And I was lucky enough uh, to be young enough before ev uh, the, the Yosemite Valley became a complete circus. And I actually, th th there can be as many as a million people a day or something horrible going through, it, through the place. It really gets ridiculous. I was lucky enough to go there when there was only two or three parties on the nose route. And every route we climbed on Table Mountain was training to do this route, the nose. All, all our climbing was actually directed towards this. We were training to go and climb the nose. Um, and here we are on the, the great roof on the nose. What we were doing is playing the game. We were, we were playing the game that went from big, wall, from big wall climbing through alpine climbing through bouldering was part of the game and uh, Himalayan climbing. And bouldering was training to go uh, trad climbing, which was training to go big wall climbing, which was training to go alpine climbing, which was training to go Himalayan climbing. You were always training to go climbing. I took a look at the ascents of Everest, and one of the remarkable things, and this is something I really found fascinating, was this point here. 1990 is when the number of ascents actually kicked off. Before that, the, the number of ascents on Everest burbled along around about, somewhere around about 20 ascents a year, and then suddenly in 1990, something happens that actually kicks off the ascents. <coughs> I looked at the world population, I'm a scientist, so I have to do this kind of thing, give you some numbers. I looked at the world population at the time, and, and what is interesting is, from 1990 to the present, we had almost two billion people uh, arrive on this earth. It costs half a million rand to climb Everest. Half a million rand, it's not cheap. And so, a huge population, um, <coughs> of people, and, if you, and I, I actually went to the Forbes list of, of billionaires to have a look, and in 2000 we had 470 billionaires, and by the 2010 we have over 1,200. What we have is a growing population, a growing population that are actually quite wealthy, that don't have the time to bugger around putting an expedition together. Um, so when we actually look at it, it's time that's, that's of an essence. People have the money, but they don't have the time. And so we have this burgeoning of a whole new set of games coming out. The games we played as kids are no longer uh, valid. So people go into gyms, people are now sport climbing, all of this started around about 1990. Uh, these cruddy photos come from Justin Lawson, it's not mine. <laughs> um, he, the, 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 the sport climbing in South Africa started around about 1990. All of this is around about 1990 that the start of, and it, 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 it's an increase in wealth. 
My take is that all of this is climbing. We've got a bigger population, we've got to make space on our mountains for more people. And I'm quite happy if they want to go and sit in queues on the Hillary step. I'm absolutely fascinated about that. But what this has taught us is to use the sport climbing as training to get up into high parts. This is in, in the southern Sahara area somewhere, um, where we were climbing grade 30 in the most appalling conditions. And that's because sport climbing taught us how to do it. Sport climbing made us do this. We were at high up in the middle of nowhere, and we were able to do it. Well, I wasn't. I got all these famous oaks to do it. <laughs> I'm saying to you, play the game that you want to do. Don't ask people if that's mountaineering. If they're on the mountain, it's mountaineering. If they want to go climbing Everest um, with three or four Sherpas to, to help them, that's their deal. If you want to be like Julia in the middle of nowhere in, in northern India somewhere, that's where I would love to be. Not with Julia, but actually with Julia too. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I would love to be. It's using the skills of the bouldering, the sport climbing and everything else to get us up into those higher peaks. So don't question what other people are doing. Go out and do your own game. Thanks. Uh -huh.